Green Econ, presented by Sendal, Australia's first 100% carbon neutral shipping service. Hello and welcome back to Green Ecom, where each week we dive into the latest e-commerce news and trends and answer the questions you need to know to help your businesses thrive online. Of course, remembering while Sendle is the presenting sponsor of today's discussion, all of the views and opinions in the following discussion are of course our own. And with that out of the way, we can welcome you to our third episode. We all know e-commerce industry moves fast and consumer expectations evolve and new technologies emerge, it's important for e-commerce businesses to keep up with the latest trends so they can get ahead and stay ahead as the new year approaches. We're right in the middle of the retail peak season. We've just had Black Friday and Cyber Monday, and now Christmas is around the corner, and of course the Boxing Day sales that follow. Like I said, the industry moves pretty fast, and we have a lot to cover today with our special guests. And joining me today is James Chin Moody from Sendal, Hannah Udina from Shopify, and David Boyer from ShipStation. Welcome to all of you. Thank goodness you're here to help me out, because I have a lot of Christmas shopping to get done. <laughs> Great to Good be to here. See you all. So James, I'll start with you and inflation and the rising cost of living is something on everyone's mind at the moment. How do you think inflation will impact consumer spending in 2023 as a result, small businesses as well? Take us through what you've seen. Yeah, absolutely, Mike. I, th I think there's gonna be two big things that really shape consumer spending in 2023. And, and I see that as, as value and values. Um, so the first is, you know, there's going to be a really big push for value, as you say. Um, we, we actually did a small business report. It showed that over 50% of those folk, of those small businesses we surveyed said the rising cost of products and services were going to be their biggest challenge, um, both at the moment and into the future, um, particularly with online sales growth. And, and I, I don't think we've seen the full impact of the rate rises yet, but that will continue to flow through the economy. Um, so those brands that can demonstrate real value to their customers with the ones that succeed, particularly in the first half of next year. Um, that all being said, I think there's another big trend that we see and we're going to continue to see, which is this shift to values-based purchasing. And this is where the potential upside is. Um, over 70% over of those folk that we surveyed said they're more likely to purchase from a business that has values that align with theirs, particularly when all else is equal. And I think this is where small businesses in particular can thrive and differentiate. They can tell their stories and they can say what they stand for. Because I think those companies that can provide real value in this, in this market and then differentiate themselves based on their values are the ones who can really succeed. Absolutely, and well said by you. Hannah, I'll go to you for the moment. And research found that 52% of shoppers are putting aside more money than they had in previous years before the bills bite. What are the most important factors to consider when trying to attract shoppers in the current economic climate uh, that we've sort of outlined there? Yeah, well, Mike, good news is, is that it's not all doom and gloom. Consumers haven't stopped spending. Instead, their spending habits have shifted to become more considered. Okay. And today, consumers are really looking to stretch their dollar further on products delivering value that lasts. In fact, our data shows that quality and value now rule consumer spending decisions, with 69% of consumers looking to spend money on higher quality products that last to make their yeah. money stretch further. To add to this, as we head into 2023, it's important for brands to remember that values rule right now, as James said, and as a result, loyalty is up for grabs. In fact, what we're seeing is that Australian shoppers actually ranked higher than the global average, saying that cost savings would convince them to switch to a rival's brand product. And almost 84% are making more considered purchases by comparing prices to see where the best discounts are. So basically, Aussie shoppers love a bargain. However, interestingly, despite the wallet squeeze, Australian consumers are not willing to budge on their commitment to making climate conscious choices. And this is really important. 51% of consumers say that they shop sustainably now and plan to either continue with their efforts or be more sustainable in 2023. And very few are willing to compromise on this, even in a cost of living crisis. So Mike, three things for retailers to consider when vying to be where customers choose to spend their hard-earned dollars are building loyalty in terms of traditional loyalty programs but also brand communities creating value in terms of price and quality and advocating for conscious consumerism in terms of having a clear proposition on their brand values whether it's sustainability ethical sourcing or even cruelty free Absolutely, and well said by you. Thank you for the rundown, Hannah. David, I'll jump over to you for the moment. And from a shipping perspective, what do you think are some of the biggest trends we can expect to see when it comes to delivery of these services in 2023? 
Yeah, sure. Thanks, Mike. I think the big trend we'll continue to see is, is transparency as a requirement within shipping, shipping policy, shipping experience. So retailers and consumers learned this requirement during some of the most challenging parts of the pandemic, and now it's generally expected with every purchase and, and uh, uh, delivery within. So for retailers, this means being honest with delivery times and keeping your consumers notified across every step of the shipping journey. So that would be like as an example, informing of delays or if there's a large influx of orders like Black Friday, Cyber Monday, which we just went through, like communicating the potential delay there in dispatching times is, is key. Uh, another trend we expect to see is a shift in behaviors in response to some of the economic uncertainty that we're seeing um, that, that would also shift like uh, uh, consumer preferences there within like to what uh, James alluded earlier to. So as an example, some merchants are already charging for uh, online delivery services and return services across categories that previously offered those same services for free. Um, what we find interesting, though, is that despite these shifts, they're not necessarily in line with uh, consumer expectations, where one of our uh, ship station recent global research studies showed that delivery speed and cost are still the two most important factors mm -hmm. for website conversion uh, for merchants. So. Um, yeah, despite that, like a couple of ways merchants can overcome this or businesses can overcome this is uh, consumers are a little bit more likely to accept a delivery charges if they're uh, a position as services. So retailers have an opportunity here to enhance the delivery experience by offering times delivery slots where possible and, and dynamic pricing there within and maybe start to accept returns or, or continue accepting returns if that's already an established policy and then just removing old product listings that um, um, that aren't available anymore just to ensure correctness and, and being transparent on what you're offering. James, uh, we know that green e-commerce is on the rise. How important do you think it is for e-commerce businesses to go green in 2023 or at least start the process? I know it's a, a lot of brands out there are looking at getting started. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as, as Hannah mentioned, green going green is not just a fad, but it's a mm. it's a deep trend that is just going to be here for, for 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 a very long time. In fact, until it becomes mainstream and, and permanent, I think yeah. uh, it's also taking hold. I, it's, it's interesting. Um, in our latest small business report, we also found that a third of small businesses have already taken action. Um, so so it really is starting to see shift. I think the best thing. To, to, and the best place to start is to recognize in many cases, going green doesn't have to be a trade-off. Um, for example, in our world of shipping, uh, reducing the carbon footprint of a parcel can actually translate into uh, more efficient delivery, which can actually translate into cost savings. Um, so, so I think you know, we're seeing that uh, it really starts with measurement, starts with understanding what your footprint is, um, and just that very act of, of, of trying to understand what your footprint is, you'll actually find efficiencies in your business. Uh, and then and thinking about the choices when you're purchasing. Yeah, there certainly is a lot to consider, especially this time of year. But Hannah, I want to go to you for a moment. And each of the past few years has thrown new and unique challenges at small business from lockdowns to supply chain issues and, of course, the cost of living we now face. With that in mind, what are your top predictions for retail next year? Great question, Mike. Now, commerce is now everywhere as consumers really want to stay connected with the brands that they love, whether it's in store, online or even on social. So we shouldn't forget about the magic of in-person experiences. But in 2023, it's not about one or the other. Consumers want it all. So we're really engaging in commerce anytime, anywhere, on a multitude of devices, apps, platforms and channels that span both, both physical and digital locations. So really, flexibility and customer choice are critical. Commerce is everywhere and brands need to be where their consumers are. So one prediction is that there will be a strong focus on how brands' physical and digital presence can play together to really strengthen both the business and customer experience. Social commerce is also a trend to watch. Consumers are now open to new experiences and really willing to shop via social services more than ever. In fact, 89% of consumers say that they'll continue or become more likely to make purchases via an online store, with 69% saying that they'll continue to shop on social media. Lastly, knowing that consumers want to spend but are researching more, it's really important to have a direct relationship with consumers and secure their attention. 92% of retailers agree that direct brand to consumer relationships are critical to building loyalty. And almost 64% of consumers say that how brands communicate with them is critical in determining if they'll buy from them. So Mike, top predictions for the retail next year, 
More brands will be testing in-store experiential retail. Social commerce will be hot and building loyalty will become increasingly important. Uh, David, I'll jump over to you. And before we wrap up, are there supply chain and logistic issues that you foresee impacting online retailers next year? And if so, do you have any advice on uh, how people can best navigate them? It's always going to be something that's going on, especially after what we saw with the pandemic. It seems to still be in this refractory period where we're getting back on our feet. Yeah, that's a very good point to consider, Mike. Like in order to navigate some of the disruptions that we're still overcoming from the last year and a half, uh, one of our recent uh, surveys or, or research bits highlighted the need to develop or continue developing flexible supply chains. And we have three strategies that we think help in that. One is simplifying and diversifying the chain itself. So businesses should explore either simplifying the chain or making them shorter and reducing over-reliance on single countries um, uh, within those models. So like a China plus one model, a China plus two model, those are, are common approaches that we're seeing being successful. Uh, second strategy is in rethinking inventory, and that's a very deep well to draw from a lot of potential strategies within that, but um, establishing an alternative supply source to fast track volume delivery capability is really key. Um, as well as adopting better, more agile inventory policies to make sure that you can get just in time strategies, quote unquote, for delivery of product by having uh, you know, a diversified mix of where your stock is and being delivered from that. That's always a, a helpful thing. So just rethinking inventory in that context. And then lastly, it's improving the final mile. So like the final stages of a supply chain um, have seen tremendous changes in consumer expectations. Now it's like, you know, it needs to be cheap needs to be speedy, that's been normalized. So consistently achieving those two benchmarks, those objectives, it's gonna require further investment, either if you're a more scaled business, like investing in distribution centers that are really efficient. If you're not at that scale, using automated services or softwares that can help reduce you know, time to, mm -hmm. to dispatch. And then thirdly, like adding a, either a micro fulfillment approach, having mini hubs or shipping from store to meet consumer demand at, at any scale. Very well said by you. Guys, I want to thank you all for joining me. James Chin, Moody, Hannah Udina and David Boyer, thanks for your time on Green Ecom today and outlining it from so many different angles. I really appreciate your time. Wonderful. Thanks, thanks Mike. Mike. Thank you. Well, there you have it for the moment. That's all the time we have for now on Green Ecom. And good luck to all of you out there as we head into that busy holiday season. And if you haven't already, get your gift getting into gear. That's my advice from you. But uh, I've been your host, Mike Loader, and thank you so much for your company. And I'll see you again soon. Be well.